Okay, so now we're going to set up a workflow. So right now I'm going to do intent signal targeting. So all you need to do is click try it. Now you have two main things you need to configure when you're setting up a workflow. One is trigger and two is actions. Now in this case, the trigger is going to be intent. So I'm going to go over here. I can either search for the intent topics I have, or I'm simply going to select. I already know what I want to select. So in this case, I'm going to do sales software and lead generation. Now, max enrolled companies, this is how many companies you can enroll in this workflow. I'm going to set this to 250 because I don't want it to eat up my pull credits. And this search, this workflow is going to be very targeted as well too. So I'm also not going to have a lot. Now, signal score, like I said, I only want it to be the most qualified. If you keep it wide open between 60 and 100 and, you know, one person to five people, you're going to have a lot of companies that may not be the most qualified. So because it does take bulk credits and I don't want to overwhelm my salespeople, I'm going to simply adjust this so it's very, very targeted. So in this case, I'm going to do a signal score 90. And keep in mind, signal score is like, pretty much how interested they are in a topic based off like the historical averages of them. So audience strength, I'm going to set to four and audience strength simply means how many people are researching it in relation to the size of the company department, job title, and so on. So now I'm going to apply my zoom info filters. Now it's very important to configure this. Otherwise you're going to get companies from industries that are not relevant to what you're selling. So I'm going to select software. There we go. I'm going to select my headcount between, we'll do 500 and 1000. I don't care in this case if they have any funding rounds, so I'm not going to configure that, but I did want to show you that. Company attributes, I'm not configuring this either, but if you do have specific attributes you're looking for, here's where you would set it up. Type and model, not going to configure that as well, just because um, based off what I'm targeting, I'm not concerned if it's B2B or B2C. And what I'll get into later is like actual contacts. So the location, I want them to be in the US. And technology, I don't really care if they have any technology in this case or if they're using any technology. But if I was looking for companies that have a specific technology, then I would set that up. Now, it is important to note that the key to setting this up is treating it just like you would an advanced search. All the same filters, all the same contacts, everything you're looking for that you would set up normally in an advanced search is what you're going to do here. Now, I'm going to discover, you can do up to 50 or 20. So this is per company. In this case, because of the size I'm targeting between 500 and 1,000, there's probably not going to be more than five potential people that I can contact. So I'm simply going to set that to five. And now I'm going to apply the contact filters. Very important to set this up because you're going to be pulling from HR and operations and sales if you don't set it up correctly. So if I had my buying committee set up for this, I'd simply check uh, show buying committee. I don't in this case. So I'm going to search for the job titles that I specifically want. So in this case, I want VP or C-level, and I want them to be involved in sales. In this case, I'm actually going to select all of sales. So anybody in the sales department that is a C-level or a VP, that greatly limits it there. And for the contact information, because this is costing bulk credits, I want it to be worth it. So I'm going to set it between 90 and 99, and I want them to have a mobile phone number and a direct phone number and a business email. So absolutely the most qualified, most accurate contact information I can find. And for the location, I want them to be in the US. Now I simply click apply. And then when this workflow is triggered, when they find, uh, when somebody displays a s intent signal about sales software lead generation between 90 and 100 and four to five people, four to five people filter, <laughs> it's not only four to five people, and they are within this company and industry, I want them to export both the companies and the contacts. This is important because you can do just the companies and depending on what your sales process is, that might be what you wanna do or just the contacts in your CRM. And then I want to assign it to myself. So I simply click assign it to Bowtight Systems and there we go. Now, 
Workflows can be useful when you're managing a large team and that team has multiple people and it's split up into multiple smaller teams. And then you can assign it to people based off specific territories or specific triggers or markets and so on. So from here, my workflow is successfully configured. Now all I need to do is simply turn on my workflow. All right, that's it. My workflow is done. You know, what? I'm going to rename this as well too. So sales tech, sales tech and lead gen. Okay. We're going to turn that on and now we're going to close it. Now it's going to bring me to this page and it's going to show any data that's processed and it's generally just setting it up. Like it says underneath, it can take 15 to 30 seconds, but there's not going to be anything here as you can see. So from here, I can edit my workflow further if I need to. I can refresh it. I can see the history based off the past 30 days. Like I said, there's nothing here, so you're not gonna see anything here. But if I were to go to my workflow list, now I can see a list of all my different active workflows. Now I can see right here, this is the one I just created. There's no information, so I'm not gonna show that. But let's say you have a workflow that is active or is not active that does have information. So all I need to do is simply click here. I can see 5.6 thousand were completed. One was failed when it was updated, when it's created, when was it last processed four days ago. And I can see the number of contacts versus companies exported. And in this case, just to be clear, I did set this so it would export 20 contacts per company. So I had quite a lot. That's why I turned it down for this example. So you can see if you scroll down all the recent contacts that were exported, and all the companies that were exported as well. So yeah, that is how you set up workflows.